This is something that I have been throwing for a long time, and not many people throw it, especially out here. This is more of a, an Eastern thing. Yes. Oh, yeah, this is a fish head spin. A couple of things I'm going to do to this thing. Most important thing. When you leave here, you're never going to talk about this again. Okay? I'm going to take a lot of times, I, when, I, when I first started throwing this thing, I never knew I was even getting bit on it. I'd be throwing it and, you know, slack would get knocked in a little bit or maybe it bumped something like I hit a tree, even though the fish were biting it. Well, 90% of the fish that are going to bite this thing, they're going to come up and they're going to bite the blade. They're just going to come up, mouth on the blade, just maybe touch the blade. So I found a way, you know, this is a thing I learned back east. This is a number one straight shank hook on the concave, concave side of the blade. It's going to spin. You're not even going to know it's there. Fish ain't going to know it's there. It's going to come up, grab this thing, and you're going to hook it just like that. Just a way, real quick, suspended fish, you know, fall fishing. This is going to get you a couple more bites. And this is a deadly technique. You know, same thing. You're going to throw it. We're going to throw the Alabama rig. You're going to throw a jerk bait anywhere, you know, top water. Fish may be backed off. Um, as far as trailer, glossy shad, you know, something like that, or a fluke. I prefer a little swim bait like that. Again, this is very durable. I'm going to throw this on a seven foot rod, you know, probably a crankbait rod because if you're going to hook one on this, this is a light wire hook. You don't want to, you don't want to have too much stretch, too much power. And I'm going to throw this like on 10 pound tests and really, you know, hook them and fight those suckers and really. No, that's a Gamagatsu uh, number one straight shank hook, light wire. It, medium wire will change the action. So very important. Yes. Cool. So another real quick tip for you guys. You know, it's becoming in Northern California down here jerkbait time. And this is something that I always believe in. You know, when the water gets cool, maybe in the summertime, it doesn't matter as much having a jerkbait that floats. But winter time, you know, early spring, I want this jerkbait to slowly sink. I don't want this thing coming up at all. I don't, I don't want it, you know, suspended is okay, but I always prefer to have something slowly sink. Not fast, but just definitely gonna sink down a little bit. So I'm gonna throw this thing, you know, it depends on what jerkbait. This is a, a squad metal 115, crankbait rod, you know, maybe eight to 10 pound test, and it seems light, you know, but you're gonna get a lot more bites on it. Again, a couple things I'm gonna do. <coughs> This is a little thing I've, I found out. I don't like weighting a jerkbait with lead strips or, or those dots. It just seems like it changes the action of the bait. So I'm going to take a split ring, two split rings, the same size that are going to be on this bait, and I'm going to put them right next to the split rings on the front. And just that little difference is going to make this bait sink a little bit. So it's not going to come up. So that right there is going to make it sink down a little bit. You're going to get a little bit deeper. And it seems like it makes a huge difference when the water's cool. I mean, if this thing rises, they're not going to bite it. Because most of the time, you know, jerk, jerk, pause, they're going to bite it on the pause. And also, with hooks, now this is going to go for top water, um, crankbaits, jerkbaits. This is something I've always done. When you look at a treble hook, you're going to see when they're, when they're put together, there's going to be two on one side and one on the other. Then they're welded together like that. I always like to, to change them up a little bit, meaning I like to have the two on this side, and then maybe one on this side, and then two on that side. You know, with the crankbait or jerkbait, what that's going to do, if a fish comes up and punches this thing, slaps at it, you know, if they're all on one side, they're going to they're gonna go away from the fish. But if they're, they're opposite, you know, one, two, one, one of those hooks, when that thing hits, is going to come at the fish, and the other ones are going to go away. So it just seems like, you know, that's a quick tip for you guys with a jerkbait. You know, maybe they're, they're not eating it really well, but that's something they're going to come up, and maybe you're going to get an extra hook in one that you wouldn't have. Also, you know, this is something that I learned from fishing back there, this big spoon. I know someone was talking about this big spoon earlier, but uh, just a deadly, deadly bait. You know, I was fishing Orville last week, and we're, uh, they just planted a bunch of salmon in there. Now, something, uh, you know, they, they're obviously eating the salmon, but the majority of the bait fish are a little pond smell. You know, they're little two-inch baits. So for years, I've thrown a little two-inch spoon, just jerking around there and you're catching fish. So I threw that last week and then I put this thing on and I got five to one bites on this big spoon. And I think it's just purely because it's a reaction bite. One thing I'm gonna do on this spoon for sure is put a stinger on there. Now you can you can put it directly on the eye, you know that works. This way to me it seems like a little bit better. 
I'm going to put a bobber stopper on here, okay? And then I'm going to have this hook free sliding. And you're going to hook a couple more fish like that. How you're going to fish this thing, you know, you can vertically drop it down. And, you know, just like we've always fished a spoon, yo-yo it on top. But I like to cast this guy. I'm going to have a seven and a half foot, eight foot rod. I'm going to make a really long cast. I'm going to let it fall down. And then, you know, I'm going to rip it back. You don't need a super hard um, jerk. You know, you just kind of need a more of a, a long rod. And sweep it up, let it fall down, and follow the slack all the way down. And you guys will be amazed how many more bites you get on this for such a big bait. Is that a Nichols or Lake Park? That's a Nichols. You know, they all work. The Lake Fork's great. Um, you know, with them planting the salmon in that one lake, it seemed like that was the best option, you know, for me. So that's some of the stuff, guys, I'm going to do. A couple other things just to think about on the drop shot. Uh, this is something I've done for a while. Let me grab the drop shot real quick. So let's say you're fishing some fish, and it's really tough. You know, they're not really biting anything. You got this crosstail shad. Okay, this is something that works when other things won't. I'm going to take the same setup, you know, 3 16 ounce weight, little crosstail shad, um, a number two hook or a number four hook, and I'm going to, I call this uh, just free line and drop shot. I don't know what I call it. I call it something, but it's really cool. I'm going to take a little bobber stopper. Clear is usually better than the black ones. I'm going to put a bobber stopper, let's say, right here. Then I'm going to put a bobber stopper up here, and this hook's going to be free sliding in between the two bobber stoppers. And it sounds crazy, you know, it sounds like, why would you do that? But when you're sitting there and you're shaking this worm, it's really going to jump around. It's going to have a lot more action. It's going to be a lot more natural. And, you know, the bobber stoppers are very important with this technique just because, you know, hook set. You think you're going to set the hook and it's just going to slide right through. But there's actually some small bobber stoppers you're going to put on there and you'll still be able to get a good enough hook set if you're throwing the Power Pro. That's yep. That's the next thing. You then with that, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to tie your your drop shot weight on there. Yep. So that's uh, that's something. Also with the drop shot weights. If you guys are going with tungsten now, you know I know this seems basic, but once you tie the polymer, you have the whole setup. I always I know this clevis. You know some of them they they're not really closed. I mean they're kind of half halfway closed. I always like to pinch them down. Plus I still will tie an overhand knot right in that clevis, kind of put it up there, and that way it's going to hold on a little bit better. You're not going to cast it off. So, so yeah. You guys have any other questions? So the only thing that's uh, stopping that hook is your weight? The weight on that. And now I'm not going to do that unless I can't get bit on anything. You know, but it's just a, something to try. You know, if you're on a school of fish and they stop biting, let's say, you caught 20 fish in a row. And maybe not 20, but you catch a bunch of fish and they stop biting. You can have it as a backup, you know, cleanup bait where you're going to get a couple more bites where you never would have. And then also, real quick, while this guy's here, two more things to show you guys. Back to the nail weight. Different change up here. Same ball head, I'm going to throw on a two. This might be an eighth of an ounce cell. I'm going to glue this thing in the head, and now when I'm dragging this thing on the bottom, this thing's going to be ticking rocks, this little ball head. It's not going to be inside the, the Cinco or the worm. It's going to be on the outside. So it's going to be ticking stuff, get a lot more sound. It could draw you a couple more bites. Plus, you're going to have better bond, bottom contact. I think they call this Nico rig in Japan, but it works great. You know, works great with the flick shake worm, um, really your favorite plastic worm. Uh, another thing, suspended fish. I know this thing looks like a big old goofy sucker. But uh, Northern California, this has been a, a, a really good thing, you know, for suspended fish the last couple of years. And this is just a big striper jig. And I'm going to throw this thing out there. I'm going to, you know, let it sink to the bottom. I'm going to count it down. And I'm just going to let it pendulum swing back on tight line. You know, I might give it a rip and then just let it kind of glide through the water column. Another thing, a cleanup bait. You're going to catch a couple more fish when you wouldn't get a bite, um, you know, otherwise. So. Cool. You guys have any more questions? I know there's uh, guys in line to get up here, so I appreciate it, guys. Yeah.